kitty surprise comes with three, four, or five baby kitties. One in four comes with four or five. Each sold separately. Since it began nine years ago, Nick's Super Toy Run has given away over $100,000 worth of prizes to kids. This year, it could be you. To find out how to enter, keep watching Nick. and Natasha attempted to hitch a ride in Bullwinkle's armored car, but got the big brush off when he went under a low bridge. Are there something new, eh, Boris? Like what? This is first time I ever walked home from both rides. Meanwhile, our heroes were just depositing the money in the Hog Breeders National Bank in Squaw's Ankle, Wyoming. You sure the money will be safe, Mr. Wangle? Safe? Safe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is pretty ridiculous, Dockle, isn't it? <laughs> What's so ridiculous, Dockle, Bullwinkle? I don't know, but we need every laugh we can get. I meant it's foolish to worry about money in this bank. It's one big booby trap. Oh, I could tell by looking at the customers. No, I mean when we put something in this vault, it's in to stay. Now, let's see what happens when somebody tries to get into the vault. As soon as he touches the door... Like this? An electric light flashes. An electric handcuff grabs his wrists. An electric club starts hitting him on the head. And an electric FBI man comes out and arrests him. Pretty impressive. Yeah. What happens if the electricity goes off? It can't. The cable is armor-plated all the way out of the bank and out of town clean to the main power line. Look. And in a little while, Mr. Wangle and our heroes were standing near the main power pole outside Squaw's ankle. Gee, I guess you thought of everything. Yep. Except maybe somebody cutting the main power line. Oh, come on, Bullwinkle. How could you cut the main line? Easy. You just climb up this pole and snip snap with a pair of scissors. Yeah, but the electric company wouldn't let you do that. I'd like to see him stop me. Okay, you stop. Who you? Who you? World's most famous electric company detective. An electric company detective? What's your name? Sherlock Holmes. Holmes? O-H-M-S is an electrical joke. <laughs> and this is my partner, Dr. Watts. W-A-T-T-S, darling. Sure, I've seen your name on light bulbs. Ho, ho, ho. Can I get down now? Certainly. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. And in a little while, our heroes were back at the bank. Well, looks as if everything's okay. We must be near the end of another story. Time for us to walk hand in hand into the sunset, huh? Yeah, except it's awful early in this episode. Early? Look, it's dark outside already. True enough, the sun had gone down, but the story seemed far from ended. It's only the beginning, folks. What is fiendish plan, Holmes? It's obvious, Natasha. We cut line, town is blacked out, we sneak in, rob bank. But if whole town is blacked out, why not rob whole town? Natasha, I got it, I got it. Wait till you hear. What, darling? If whole town is blacked out, why not rob whole town? Boris, how do you get such marvelous ideas? Oh, they just come to me. Oh, I know. Okay, Natasha, start snipping with snippers. And the two villains began chopping at the main power line. In just a few seconds, all the lights in Squaw's Echo began to flicker and dim. Boy, my eyes hurt. My glasses need changing. You don't wear glasses, Bullwinkle. Well, then my eyes need changing. And at that second, all electricity went off in Squaw's Echo, and the whole town lay at the mercy of Boris Badenov. Mercy? I don't know the meaning of the word. It means the quiet. Oh, never mind. Be with us next time for Boris Takes a Town or The Nightmare. The 
there was once a handsome young prince named John. And where one finds a handsome young prince, one is most certain to find a beautiful young princess. Her name was Tinsel, and they were very much in love. I love you, John. <laughs> I love you, Tinsel. They were never happy unless they were together. Oh, I'm so unhappy. Peekaboo, guess who? Oh, no, I'm happy. Day after day, they went out hunting or fishing. Night after night, they went to balls at the funny house at the beach. They sang and danced and ate sugar plums out of the same dish. They shared delicate secrets together. How much money do you have? Oh, a hundred million grinkles. You know, give or take a thousand or so. Vava boom, that's a lot of grinkles. You can say that again. Vava boom, that's a lot of grinkles. Then finally, as everyone knew they would, they were married. And they moved into a beautiful white castle high on a green hill. They were so full of joy that everybody called it the happy house. Yeah. Oh, so happy! <laughs> that is everybody but one, an evil old witch named Grumpyra who hated happiness. It's disgusting! I'll put a stop to it if it's the last thing I do! Then, taking a basket of poison apples, she hurried off to the castle. Who is it, dear? It's an old hag with mussed up hair selling apples. Apples? Yes, you know. The poison kind that you take a bite of and they put you to sleep for a million years. Oh, well, tell her we don't want any. We don't want any. With that, the witch was roughly thrown from the castle. And once again, happiness echoed from within. <laughs> <laughs> By now, Grumpyra was near the breaking point. Storming back to her cave, she took a huge black kettle and set herself to the task of concocting a mysterious, evil-smelling brew. <laughs> Where did I put the gruffy dust? Oh, yes, here it is. A pinch of this and a pinch of that. A dewy button and a french fried bat. <laughs> oh, all these witches' brews are murder, but what are you going to do? A short time later, she had finished and hurried off to the castle where she stole into the garden and sprayed every rose with a strange mixture. It's done. Now when the princess comes into the garden to pick roses... Oh, the garden is beautiful today. I shall pick some roses for my prince. She will prick her finger... Ouch! ...and turn into an ogre! And when the beautiful young princess, who was now an ugly old ogre, went into the castle... Hello, dear. <laughs> Wearing your hair a little differently, aren't you? Mm, it's worse than that. I turned into an ogre. A closer look told the prince that what she said was true. And this made him very unhappy. The old witch's plan had worked, for the castle was now the saddest place on earth. Now the story would have ended right there, but for one thing. Ogres love to cook. And that night, when John's ogre wife set his evening meal in front of him, it was the most magnificent food he had ever tasted. Dear, I mean uh, it. That was the best meal I ever had. So pleased was the wife by the compliment that she went right back into the kitchen and cooked some more. And before long, being so full of fine food made the prince happy. This, of course, made the ogre happy, and once again, happiness rang from the castle. <laughs> Grumpyra, of course, wasted no time in flying back to the castle to see what had gone wrong. Say, laughing boy, how could you possibly be happy with an ogre for a wife? Well, it's the food it cooks. Have a bite? Say, that is tasty. Join me? Love to. They both dug in and ate all John's ogre wife could cook. And she cooked all they could eat. The food was so good that even Grumpyra, for the first time in her life, was happy. You know, she's such a good cook that uh, I could kiss her. Oh, no, 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 no. You must never do that, boy. All right, but why not? Because if a handsome prince kisses her, it will break the spell, and she will turn back into a beautiful princess who can't cook for sour apples. She? Oh, I'm glad you told me. As a precaution against ever kissing the ogre by mistake, the prince let his beard grow and wore a gag over his mouth whenever he wasn't eating. Things were well and happy for a score of years until one day when John's ogre wife was giving some scraps to their pet dog, he affectionately licked her face and... <laughs> She instantly turned back into the beautiful princess. Ah, what happened? The dog kissed her. You don't mean... I'm afraid so. His name is Prince. That meant an end to the good cooking, and the prince and the witch were frantic. Doesn't it make you happy that I'm beautiful again, John? Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Do you remember what you did? I think so. Come on. Now, having an ogre for a wife has its drawbacks, but John was happy that day, and very soon thereafter... A, a pinch, pinch of this, this a, a pinch, pinch of that, a dewy button, and a french fried cat. John was to be very happy once again.
Everyone who can vote should vote. Everyone who can watch should watch a Nick News special edition, Who Wants to be President? Facts you need to make your choice. Tonight at 8, 7 central on Nick. Chester Cheetah here. I'm a hang loose kitty riding the crest of Surf City. Life's a beach when Cheeto's paws are in reach. Whoa, bro. Check out the surfer girl shooting the girl. Awesome. And Big Alfonso going gonzo. Gonna dangle on this wave till I wrangle what I crave. Cheeto's brand paws. The cheese that go I Crime. Maybe if I'm president, I can get tricks with yummy fruit shapes. And no homework! Excuse me. A vote for me means fruity tasting tricks for everyone. With breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And the rabbit screen them too. What? I say tricks. A fruity tasting part of this complete breakfast will always be just for kids. So much for new ideas. With our low price guarantee, every day you'll get low, low prices on a great selection of toys. Just bring in any competitor's ad and we'll match the price guaranteed. I want to be a toy My boy, I've done it. What's that, Pop? I've written the great American fable. How's that again, Pop? I can see it now. My name going down in history alongside of such immortals as Shakespeare, Dante, Balzac... Alfred E. Newman. The toast of Parisian literary circles, teas. What's the name of the fable, Pop? The name of the... Oh, yes, yes. Well, it's called The Fox and the Woodman. Nice ring to that, huh, Junior? The Fox and the Woodman? The great American fable, huh, Pop? This I got to hear. Will you lay it on me, Pop? Why, certainly, certainly, but don't get any ideas. I've sent for the copyright. I'm your son, Pop. If you can't trust your own son... Yeah, yeah, oh, that's right, that's right. I got carried away. You remember all that trouble I had with Mother, uh, 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 what's her name? Goose? Yes, Goose, Mother Goose. Stole every idea I had. In fact, I had to get out of fairy tales and into fables on account of her. <clears throat> well, Junior, our story starts out like this. I've got problems. You see, I was a very peaceful fellow by nature, but it seemed that no matter where I moved, I seemed to always get into trouble. I guess it's because I have such a sneaky face. Now, don't give me that, oh, no, you haven't, Jazz. No, <laughs> I've got a sneaky face. All of us foxes have sneaky faces. We've got the reputation for being sneaky, like a fox. Well, anyway, I had so much trouble in the city moving from neighborhood to neighborhood, always running with the wrong crowd. Rats, weasels, alley cats. Not that I like them, mind you, but with a face like mine, who can be choosy? Hey, here comes Fox. No! That must be the leader. The one over there with a sneaky face. That's him. That's him, the sneaky one. The one with the sneaky face. Well, anyway, uh, like I was saying, I had so much trouble in the city that I decided to move to the country. You know, thorough, communing with nature, trees, brooks, grass. Get away from the rough crowd I was hanging with. Meet some nice, honest people, the start of a new life. Yikes! There he is! Yikes? Oh, uh, uh, perhaps this is the way these simple, honest country folk greet new arrivals. <laughs> Yikes there! Yikes! It is I, Rainer the Fox. There he is! Over there, I said. This is a greeting. Who needs it? <laughs> Pardon me, sir. I couldn't help noticing what an honest face you have. Yes. I do have an honest face, don't I? Oh, the most honest. Say, with a face like that, I was wondering. Yes? Well, you see, there's a bunch of hounds and hunters chasing me. There he goes! No! Yes, I see there are. Well, I know this is an imposition, but with your honest face and everything... Over here! Over here! Sir. I was wondering if you... I mean, I, I hate to be a drag, but... 
Could you hide me? I couldn't hear you for all that commotion. What did you say? You weren't paying attention. <laughs> now listen. Could you hide me? Why not? Well, there's one thing, though. Would you mind not telling them where you've hidden me? I mean, in case anyone should ask. Oh, I won't say a word. So he puts me in this giant pot, and he sits there with his honest face, waiting for the hunters to arrive. I say, Woodman, have you seen a fox with a sneaky face? Oh, 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 charades. Let's see now. One word, category. Uh, one, one word. Uh, sounds like box, box, box. Uh, locks? No, uh, how, how about fox? Well, that's it, eh? Fox. Uh, where, where is he? Wait. Oh, se se second word. Uh, preposition. Of, at, but, in. Oh, oh that's it. it. In. Fox, in. Th third word. Third word. Three letters. Uh, round. Round. No, no. Eat out of round. Uh, no. Uh, bowl. Bowl. Pot. Uh, that's it. That's it. Fox in pot. <whistles> but let's face it, old bean. There's nothing in this pot. And especially, there's not a fox in this pot. But... But I told him to hide there myself. Yeah, that's right, Woodman. And you said I had such an honest face. An honest face and the heart of a fink. We foxes may have sneaky faces, but at least we don't go around having people hunts. Think that over. Tally-ho! So I went back to my group in the city. You know, rats, weasels, alley cats. But there was one thing I found out. It takes more than a face to be honest. You got to have it here. Right, Rat? Uh, right, Fox. But, but listen, uh, that's an interesting idea, you know, those people hunt. I mean, with the horses and the hounds and the color, the sound of the horn, the chase. Oh, come on! Well, there it is, Junior. Succinct, beautiful prose. Pulitzer Prize stuff, don't you think? There's no moral? Oh, uh, yeah, the moral. Uh, uh, oh, all right, let's hear it. <clears throat> Open the case of an honest face, and nine out of ten times you'll find beneath the case is a horrible face that is sneaky. Open the case. Yeah, all right, Junior. All right, Junior. All right. say that when better fiendish plans are made, Boris Badenov will make them. His latest was to disguise himself and Natasha as inspectors for the electric company. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watts at your service. Their scheme was to rob a whole town by cutting the main power line, leading the squaws Uncle Wyoming, and plunging the town into darkness. And this time, oddly enough, the scheme worked. Back in Squaw's Ankle, our heroes noticed immediately that something was wrong. It's dark. Pretty shrewd. Thanks. It did get late all of a sudden, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Looks like every light bulb in town went out at the same time. They don't make them like they used to. Let's go see what's the matter. Our boy started off, but unable to see where he was going, Bullwinkle stumbled over a small dog and crashed his antler through a store window. Are you hurt, Bullwinkle? Nope, but I'm afraid I bent this window a bit. What's that wire around your antler? The low leads back into the store. Here, I'll light a match and hokey smoke. You're a little young to hokey smoke yet, Rocky. Bullwinkle, I think... this is no laughing matter. What's it doing in the dialogue? Look here. Sure enough, that wire was part of the store's burglar alarm system. But just then, a familiar figure came on the scene carrying a flashlight. Oh? Hey, it's Mr. Wangle, the bank president. Glad I ran into you, boys. You didn't. You walked into us. We got to get to the bank. We're in trouble. They coming to look at the books? Even worse. With no electricity, our safe isn't safe anymore. Not even half safe. It won't even stay closed. Uh-oh. You said it. Sure enough, when our friends dashed into the bank and shone their flashlights on the vault, the huge door was sagging wide open. Gee, this must be happening all over town. Golly, looks like bank night for bank robbers. It was true. The whole town lay at the mercy of anyone mean and dirty enough to come in and rob it. And you know who he means, don't you, folks? The two villains strolled into the lonely outskirts of Squaw's Ankle and headed for the first store in town, the Bonton Bootery. Sure enough, the door swung open freely, no burglar alarm sounded, and the two villains were able to slip inside with no trouble at all. And small wonder, for the Bonton Bootery had been out of business for 14 years. Never mind, it's good practice anyway. Come on. Meanwhile, back in the middle of town, our heroes were in a dimly lit billiard parlor. Bullwinkle, I got it! Eight ball in the side pocket! No, an idea! You yeah, must have got the wrong cue. What about our worms? Yeah, what about them? Good idea, huh? Yeah. Uh, what about them? Don't you remember our herd of worms? Hmm? What do we raise on our ranch? Uh, All right, if you insist, we'll flash that. 
And Rocky reminded Bullwinkle that when they had been herding their fishing worms underground, lightning had struck the herd and every worm had been supercharged. As a result, they lit up like a lot of Christmas tree lights, which made them very picturesque, but quite useless as bait. Oh, those worms! Gee, Bullwinkle, it was only two days ago. Well, I've slept since then. And where are those worms today? I give up. Now let me ask you one. What ever happened to Evelyn Brent? They're right outside in our armored car. That's where. Evelyn Brent? The worms! Oh. Come on, Bullwinkle. We're going to use them to protect the town. These little creeps? Well, if Rocky has a plan, he'd better put it into action quick. For Boris and Natasha have just turned the corner and are heading for the Hog Breeders National Bank. Last one into vault is dirty no good, Nick. You kidding? I'm always dirty no good, Nick. Be with us next time for just Boris and me or the Yeg and I. Hang tight. Nickelodeon's moussa Rama will be right back. If it's a real big day, or a real special dream, if you feel real bad, or feel real good, want something real yummy, want to be real awesome, for a real kick, a real adventure, or a real getaway, make a real splash. With the real troll, the real collectible Rust Troll. When you get up in the morning and you want some tasty fun, you go for Sugar Bear and Golden Crisp, the golden tasting one. With a touch of golden honey for a taste of solid gold, Crispy Crunch, we got a munch, makes that golden taste explode. Can't get enough of that golden taste, can't get enough golden crisp. So to make your morning golden, get the flavor going fast. It's Golden Crisp cereal, the golden tasting blast. Can't get enough of that golden taste. It's the golden tasting part of this complete breakfast. You think you can knock out these bricks? No problem. Without making the wall fall. Let's rock and roll. Grab a hammer, knocks out those bricks. But you gotta be careful, you gotta be slick. Don't let the wall fall, that's what it's about. Knock out, it'll knock you out. Look out below. You're out. It's knockout. Knock out the bricks with the rammer hammer. Stack them up and don't let the wall fall. Don't let the wall fall, that's what it's All about. Right. Knock out. I win. It'll knock you out. Time, dudes. Knock out. It'll knock you out. You are in the ozone. And now back to Nickelodeon's Moose Rubber. Today's lecture is entitled Magic Made Easy the Hard Way. There are six basic tricks, the first of which is the trickiest, namely pulling a rabbit out of a hat. This looks familiar. Nothing up my sleeve. Presto! Oh, I try this, the bigger way I get. One of the most popular tricks, and least requested, I might add, is sawing a man in half. Here's your saw, Mr. Know-it-all. Thank you. Here we go. Ta-da! Now I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't you swear this man was cut in half? Go ahead, sir. Walk off the stage. Both halves, both halves. And now for the most difficult trick of all, the living pincushion. Step inside the box, Rock. What are you gonna do? You see these swords? Once you're inside, I shall pierce the box. And me too? Well, we hope not. Well, I'm not going in there. Very well. Then I shall call upon the services of my pet jersey. Bossy, take your place in the box. <coughs> there. Now, Bossy and I will astound you. Taking the swords, I plunge them into every section of the box. Into the bottom. The top. The side. <coughs> <coughs> Sword after sword! Now you will see that although the box is perforated with swords, Bossy is untouched. Take a look inside, Rock. I'm not gonna look in there. All righty, I shall look myself. Now, there you see. Holy cow! Well, last time, things really looked black for our friends, especially when every light in Squaw's ankle went out. Well, now starts the fun, Natasha. Last one into the bank vault is a rotten egg. Of course, darling. But then again, so is first one. Bullwinkle, I think somebody's planning to hold up Squaw's ankle. Won't that make her fall down? I mean, they're gonna rob the town in the dark. Jump and gee horse that rock. How do we stop them? We light up the town again. But how, Rocky? With our super 
charged worm hurt. And the brave squirrel reached in the back of a nearby armored car that he and Bullwinkle happened to have. Doesn't everybody? And pulled out one of their special glow worms. Now, if we can just get him to cooperate. Meanwhile, Boris and Natasha had reached the half-open door of the bank vault. It's just like taking brandy from a baby, Natasha. That's taking candy, darling. You take what you want, I take what I want. But at that instant... Boris, the town is all lit up like, you'll pardon the expression, Christmas tree. Oh, boy! As old Roman ancestors used to say, in hoc signo vinces. Meaning? The jig is up. <laughs> Little did Boris and Natasha know that those flashing lights were really Rocky's herd of glowworms, lighting up loyally and making the street bright as day. Keep at it, boys! Well, with their plan ruined, Boris and Natasha had to beat a hasty retreat. Squaw's ankle is safe at last. Okay, fellas, you can knock off now. I don't think they want to, Rock. It was true. So delighted with the glowworms with their success that they stayed at their post from that moment on. This was a boon to the citizens of Squaw's Ankle, for the glowworms could change positions in a matter of seconds. Thus, the same sign was able to blink welcome to new arrivals and bye-bye to those leaving town. When a store changed hands, it was a simple matter to change signs. And glowworms were invaluable at clearance sales time. Of course, people flocked to Squaw's Ankle to see this wondrous sight. Thanks to Rocky and Bullwinkle, the town was finally on the map. And so, as our heroes got ready to go home, and in gratitude, dear boy, we are changing the name of Squaw's Ankle to Squirrel's Ankle. Hooray! Everybody was delighted with the idea. Not quite everybody, Sonny Jim. Well, this is it. This is what, darling? This is end of electric power cable, 20 million volts. You fasten that end to that track, I fasten this end to this track. And then train rolls over wires. Roast moose and squirrel fricassee. Oh, how can you be so mean, darling? Because it'll gonna be the end for moose and squirrel. So? The end always justifies the means. Then they can't fail this time. Congratulations, Boris. You said it, Natasha. Shake. Thus it was that the train bearing our heroes sped safely back toward Frostbite Falls. <laughs> Gee, I sort of hate to leave the Worm Ranch, Bullwinkle. Oh, I don't know. I thought I was going to be a cowboy. And? Who wants to be known as a worm boy? Yeah. Lucky we weren't raising ducks to make down pillows on them. How come? Then you'd be known as a down boy. Pretty sneaky, Rock. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What would you say? I'd say it was the end. And so it is of this story. But next time, we'll start a brand new bushy tale of Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Would you ever want to be president? Before you answer, find out what it takes to get elected and run the country on the Nickelodeon Special Edition. Who wants to be president? It's coming up next. So stay tuned, Americans. Was this year's kids' choice for favorite act, best TV show, greatest team. Find out when the only network for you presents the sixth annual Kids' Choice Awards live next Saturday on SNCC. Kids Sports is a club that combines fitness with recreation. Kids Sports makes fitness fun in a non-competitive atmosphere with complete supervision by a professionally trained staff. Kids need activity and exercise. Kids need to be in shape. So why not call Kids Sports, where fit is 